What is up guys, Alex Rana Creates here. Welcome back to another video. And today I wanna to talk to you about Vocaline Project 5. Now, Vocaline Project by Synchro Arts is one of my favorite vocal timing tools. I use it on every vocal. I've been using it for years. Vocaline Project is the entry level offering by Synchro Arts into their plethora of vocal alignment tools. And it just got a massive update that makes it so much more user friendly and useful. So today I wanna to walk you through the overall controls of Vocaline Project 5 and then give you a general a workflow for using it in Pro Tools. If you're looking for a different workflow with Logic and the ARA technology, I will have a different video with that workflow linked in the description below. So one of the biggest updates with Vocaline Project 5, besides a complete redesign of the UI and adding some different controls, is the Smart Align technology that is now in Vocaline Project. And it is just an absolute game changer, which makes the whole workflow with this plugin so much easier. Now I should say this is not sponsored by Synchro Arts, I just absolutely absolutely love the plugin. So let's dive into Pro Tools and first I'll show you a general overview of the controls in Vocaline Project 5 and then I will show you a workflow to help you get started while using the plugin. So one thing before we get started using Vocaline in Pro Tools, I like to make a duplicate playlist of the tracks I'm going to be altering with Vocaline because I like to have a clean unedited version of the audio just underneath in an, alt in an alternate playlist, which helps down the line with cleanup and just kind of the things we have to fix up that Vocaline sometimes screws up. It's not perfect. It will sometimes manipulate the sound a little too much or make it not perfectly aligned. And we could probably do it better manually on like the ends of words and stuff like that. So I like to have an unaltered playlist underneath what I'm doing. So once that's duplicated, now I'm ready to open Vocaline. So first thing we have to do is Vocaline is found in the audio suite menu. It's not a plugin we put on the track themselves. And then we go to Other and Vocaline Project right there. So in the Vocaline interface, which by the way is also resizable, we can grab the bottom right hand side, we have the three tracks, the Guide, Dub, and Output track, and we'll, I'll talk to, about those in a moment. We have the Preset Menu Selector, so they have a bunch of presets. I just, there's not a lot of settings in here, so I typically just do the settings I want, but I do save my own preset that I normally use. Then to the right-hand side, we have the settings. Currently they're grayed out because we haven't actually selected anything, but those will become available to us in a moment. So with Vocaline, the first thing we have to do is capture a guide. And this is the track that we want everything else to be aligned to. Then the thing we want to align is called the dub, and then it renders the output. So first off, I have my timed vocal up here. This is a vocal I've actually already made in time with the song and I want everything else to align to it. So I'm gonna capture that as the guide. So I select it and then I hit capture in the vocal line plugin. Next thing I do is I go down to the track that I actually want to align with that guide vocal. So with that, it's right below it here, and I capture that as the dub track. Now you see it do it re its rendering thing, and now you see something on the output track. Now this right now has been changed due to the settings that I already have set here, but I'll go through those in a moment. As we change those, you'll see it re-render the output track itself. But what we see on the output track is the yellow, which is the dub track in its altered state. And then the outline of it, this blue outline, is the outline of the lead track. So we can see where the lead and the dub align together. So you can see where it's made a mistake or how close or how loose it is. So this is where we alter our settings. First off, we have the match timing button, which is of course on because that's exactly why we're using this plugin. But you can toggle it on and off if you're uh, auditioning through the plugin itself. I typically don't use this, so it's just always on. Next thing we have is the max difference. This is how tight or loose we want this to be. I'm somebody who likes really tight vocals, so it's all the way tight for me, but you can loosen it up a bit so it gives it leaves a little bit of the uh, fluctuation from the original in there. The next thing that we have is the alignment rule, and this is just kind of the how much or not much is it going to alter the vocal? And normal flexibility is the typical, most of it's going to work with the normal flexibility. I sometimes use high flexibility as well, but you're starting to allow it to introduce artifacts if it needs to, to actually make the vocal alignment correct. Those are just altering the algorithm that is allowing how far it is to be stretched to match your max difference. So it's a, a combination of the alignment rule and the max difference to make 
the vocal sound how you want it to sound. The next thing is the Smart Align button, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then the two settings below that, the Max Shift, which is just how much do we allow it to shift or not to shift uh, when it's Smart Aligning and trying to figure out where it's supposed to go. Typically, we'll be on no limit unless you have an actual problem. And that's the only time I'd touch the Max Shift, which is just how many milliseconds will it allow to be moved or not to be moved. I typically just leave it on no limit because vocal line's pretty damn smart, especially when you align your selections at the same intro point. So as long as the beginning of your selections of your dubs are the same as your guide, you probably won't have much of a problem. The next thing is the dub pitch range, which it normal is most of the time going to be fine. The high pitched and low pitched vocal is when you're talking like abnormally high pitched or low pitched. It helps its detection algorithm. You won't really notice probably a sonic difference when changing these. So normal is probably going to do just fine for what you need to do. So once you've changed your settings or selected the preset that you wanna use, we can now hit render. And that's going to take the dub vocal Vocal that we captured, and it's going to put it back where our current selection is. So if we want it on a different track, select a different track, or like I said, I duplicate a playlist, so now this is my vocal lined playlist. I'm just gonna put the new altered audio right back on this track. So I hit render, and it's going to put the altered audio back on this track. Now I'm just gonna do for the other ones, capture, and it does its thing, and I hit render, and same with the next one, capture, and it does its thing and hit render. Now is where the smart align technology is going to come in handy. So as you can see up here, the guide vocal has a whole bunch of blobs, but now the track that I have selected currently does not have all of the blobs. It only has the first line and the second line. It doesn't have this third chunk of audio, but smart align is now smart enough to realize that it doesn't need to make this chunk of audio match the whole original chunk of audio. It knows this is where it's supposed to align. So as you can see, when I hit capture, it detects this and it'll align it with the proper vocals that I have. Uh, of course, I can zoom out here, by the way, um, with the zooming thing or with option or alt on a, on a PC and a scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if I zoom in, I can also use shift to scroll along the timeline here. It already detects that this is where the line's supposed to be. This is the smart align technology at work. So with that, I'm going to render out these ones. Now we have another example. This one only has the middle chunk of audio. This is where Smart Align really shines. And this, if I capture this, you'll see it automatically detects right here where it is supposed to be. If I turned Smart Align off, it would try and render it, as you can see here by the output track. It tries to render it over here at the beginning. It's trying to align, here's the audio that I'm seeing, and here's where it's supposed to align, right back to the beginning, which is not the case. Smart Align allows it to detect, it should be right here in the middle. So this helps if you have a lead vocal that does a whole song, and then you have doubles and harmonies that only come in in the choruses or verses or certain lines. You don't have to do every single line separately. You can do the whole track in one swoop, one render, and it'll align it with the right area of the song. I typically like to do smaller sections if I can do verse and then chorus, or you know verse and chorus, and then the next chunk of verse and chorus. If there's a ton of stuff going on, I like to kind of keep it simple, but I have been using the new vocal line project with the whole song now that the range is not 120 seconds it can actually do a whole song and it does the smart align technology works so well so you can actually do that now i can render these harmonies here that are just on this section i can capture each one and it'll align it with the guide that i already have and it knows exactly where it's supposed to align to and with that we're done the alignment process that we need vocal line for so we can quit that the next part of the process is going through each track manually and making sure that it actually did it right and that there are no weird glitches or that it had to stretch something too far and ended up making it sound digital or add artifacts this is why i like to have that unaltered playlist underneath. In Pro Tools, let's say it screwed this up and this sounded really weird. I can literally just use Shift and the up out arrow to get to the previous playlist that I created copy that old set of audio and shift an arrow down back to the current vocal line playlist and I can paste this and then move it around or fix up a weird glitch that we noticed if needed. But something to be aware of is S's or breaths. Sometimes they're, they just, they aren't perfect every time and that's where you can get some really weird digital glitching on breaths because breaths, when you sing, aren't aligned properly. You sing it differently and breathe slightly differently. Vocal line tries to align that still and that's where you can get 
some weird artifacts happening. So that's where it's really handy to be able to flip quickly to the previous playlist, grab the natural breath, and put the natural breaths or S's back in to kind of clean up the ends of words or the beginnings of words that sometimes get strange. The other thing that can happen sometimes is it can add these double glitchy things. So sometimes you'll have to go through and just clean these up. I like this process. I like to go through each track manually and just make sure that it didn't do it. I just listen to it and make sure there's no weird clicks or doubles or where it wasn't totally sure or duplicated something or stretched something too much. It's just a nice peace of mind to go through it all one more time to just double check, clean up breaths, and clean up the ends of words because that's where the alignment process can be odd. And then once you're done with that cleanup, you're done the alignment process and your vocals are gonna be super tight or loose depending on how you set your settings. And that is really nice to have. Now, for those of you who are curious, this is what the before and after sound like. As you can see, I'm just gonna go to my unaltered playlist here, which you can see the difference right away. This is before, Betty, dear, please tell me. Hey, is she the one who cursed you? Boy, to give the name. And now we have after. Betty, dear, please tell me. Hey, is she the one who cursed you? Boy, to give the name. As you can see, super, super tight. There is some strangeness here on the end of this word, so I would clean that up in my manual cleaning. But we're off to a great start and saved hours of manually moving stuff around with Vocaline Project 5. So I hope you found this helpful. Go check out Synchro Arts' website for more details about Vocaline Project 5 and all of their other offerings. A reminder that if you're watching this as this comes out, it is on sale currently for an introductory price with the new update, so go check that out. Otherwise, the price is still very reasonable for this plugin and just well worth the money. I don't know how many hours it has saved me and how many headaches it saved me. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next video. Until then, always be creating.